So we're going to do a demonstration, or rather analogy, of a force balance system to help uh, better illustrate how it works when we change the position of a fulcrum. We have a beam here comprised of a pencil. We have another pencil lying underneath it that is our fulcrum. I can change the position of that fulcrum, change where this pivots. Now what I'm going to do here is demonstrate a force balance system. So my assistant Scott here is going to push down that end of the pencil. I'm going to push down this end. We're going to try to balance each other. I'm going to start pushing harder with my finger, and he's going to push harder with his finger to try to keep that pencil level. I'm going to let off with my finger. He's going to let off with his and keep the pencil level. So together we are a force balance system. Right now at the fulcrum in the middle there, we have roughly equal forces required to balance that pencil. If I push down with two pounds of force, he's got to push down with about two pounds of force to balance out because we're in equal lengths, equal moment arms in that lever. So what I'm going to do now is keep applying pressure. We're going to keep this top pencil balanced. I'm going to move the fulcrum towards Scott. Now as I do this, I can immediately feel my job becomes easier. I hardly have to push at all. How about you, Scott? Uh, harder. <laughs> yeah, he has to push a lot harder. So moving the fulcrum over in that direction puts him at a disadvantage, puts me at an advantage. So to keep the system balanced, he has to push hard. I only push very light. We'll keep it balanced here. I'll move the fulcrum over in my direction. Now I've got to push down really hard. Uh, how's your finger doing? Considerably do? easier. So Scott's considerably easier. He hardly has to push at all because now he <coughs> has the advantage. So I wanted to illustrate this because students often get confused with force balance systems. They see a lever, they see a fulcrum, and they immediately want to jump to an analysis of motion. So for instance, go ahead and let go. So if you have a lever sitting here with the fulcrum in the middle, you can see either end moves about the same distance. If I move the fulcrum over here, and I try swinging it again, like a seesaw, you can see over here this end hardly moves at all, and this end moves a whole lot. So the inclination that students like to do is they see a system like this and say, oh, okay, that's hardly moving, this is moving a whole lot, so there must be more pressure on this side, less pressure, more force on this side. That's <coughs> not true, that's actually incorrect. There's more motion, but there's less force. So if we go back to balancing this again, Scott push there and I'll push here. So I slide the fulcrum over to Scott, puts him at a disadvantage. He actually push, has to push a whole lot harder than I do. Being that's a force balance system, we have to look at this in terms of force, not in terms of motion. It's a mistake to do that or else it should be exactly backwards. You have to look at this in terms of force. So whichever end of the lever is, clo is the, uh, the fulcrum closest to, that is the end of the lever that is at the disadvantage and requires the greater force. The one with the longer lever length requires the lesser force to balance. And in a force balance system, in a true force balance system that's working properly, the actual amount of motion you have here is negligible because as soon as something moves out of position, an immediate correction comes around to put it right back where it was before. So the simplifying assumption we apply to any force balance system is that the motion is negligible and you have to think of it in terms of force.